Until the end of the world French, Just du monde, German, bis der Welt is a 1991 French-German science fiction drama film by the German film director W. I. M. Wenders. The screenplay was written by Wenders and Peter Carey, from a story by Wenders and Solveig Domarten. An initial draft of the screenplay was written by American filmmaker Michael Almirada. Wenders, whose career had been distinguished by his mastery of the road movie, had intended this as the ultimate road movie. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Plot. In late 1999, an orbiting Indian nuclear satellite is out of control and predicted to re-enter the atmosphere, threatening unknown populated areas of the Earth. Mass populations trying to flee the likely impact sites cause a worldwide panic. Caught in a traffic jam and suffering from boredom, Claire Turner escapes the highway congestion by taking a side road. When she gets into a car crash with a pair of bank robbers, they enlist her to carry their stolen cash to Paris. Along the way, she meets a man being pursued by an armed party who introduces himself as Trevor McPhee, and allows him to travel to Paris with her. After reaching the house of her estranged lover, Eugene, Claire discovers that Trevor has stolen some of the money. Claire then travels to Berlin and hires missing persons detective Philip Winter to help her find Trevor through tracking his passport and credit card—he agrees to help when he finds out Trevor has a substantial bounty on his head. However, when Claire meets Trevor for lunch, she betrays Winter and attempts to escape with Trevor. Winter catches the two having sex in a motel room, after which Trevor handcuffs them to the bed and escapes with more of Claire's money. Winter, Claire and Eugene meet in Moscow to continue the search, and find out from Moscow bounty hunters that Trevor is actually Sam Farber, wanted for stealing the prototype of a secret research project. Multiple government agencies and freelance bounty hunters are chasing him to recover the device. Winter quits the job, intimidated by the even larger bounty on Sam's head, but Eugene buys a tracking computer to help Claire. However, when the computer finds Sam's location, she leaves Eugene while she thinks he is sleeping. Following Sam on the Trans-Siberian Railway, she travels through China and reaches Japan, where she rescues Winter from a botched capture attempt at a capsule hotel. She finds Sam at a pachinko parlor rapidly losing his eyesight, and buys them train tickets to a random mountain inn. There, Sam reveals that the stolen prototype belongs to his father, Henry Farber and is a device for recording and translating brain impulses. He has been recording places and people around the world for his blind mother, Edith, but the recordings are exhausting his eyes. After the innkeeper heals Sam's eyes, he and Claire fly to San Francisco to take more recordings before heading to the Australian outback, where his father's laboratory is located. Eugene, who had travelled to Japan only to be abandoned by Claire once again, teams up with Winter to capture Sam. Along with the bank robbers, they travel to Central Australia, but Eugene fights Sam upon finding him, causing both to get arrested. When Winter bails them out, they discover that the bag containing the camera was taken from Claire while she was drugged with sleeping pills. However, the bag also contains the original tracker attached to Claire's bank money, which the bank robbers can trace. Claire and Sam take off in a small airplane to retrieve the camera. When the Indian nuclear satellite is shot down by the U.S. government, the resulting NEMP effect wipes out all unshielded electronics worldwide. Claire and Sam are forced to land the plane when the engine quits. They walk across the desert until they find the camera with the bounty hunter Bert. Reuniting with Eugene, Winter and the bank robbers, they travel in hand-cranked diesel-powered jeeps to the lab, which is sheltered in a massive cave. Henry tries to synchronize the camera with Sam's memory in order to transmit clean images to Edith's brain, but Sam is injured and too tired to perform well. After father and son come to blows, Claire tries the experiment with her recordings to phenomenal success. It is revealed that Henry wishes to apply the technology to dream retrieval in order to win a Nobel Prize. However, Henry pushes too hard and Edith eventually dies of exhaustion. Eugene's writer's block seems to have been cured and he begins composing on an antique typewriter. After Edith's death, Henry begins working on how to record human dreams. The Aborigines disagree with his goals and abandon him, so he experiments on himself, Claire, and Sam. They eventually become addicted to viewing their dreams on portable video screens. 
Eugene finds Claire curled up in a rock crevasse glued to her screen and takes her back to the village, driving her into painful withdrawal when he refuses to replace the batteries for her screen. He finishes the novel about her adventure and gives it to her, curing her of the disease of images. Meanwhile, Sam wanders into the rocky desert labyrinths with his own screen and is ultimately rescued by the Aborigines. Henry is taken by the CIA while lying in the laboratory's dream recording chair. Eugene and Claire leave the village together but break up for good. Later, Claire becomes an astronaut and spends her 30th birthday as an ecological observer, orbiting in a space station. Eugene, Winter and the bank robbers celebrate with her by singing, "'Happy Birthday' over a video fax. Cast <laughs> 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 Topic. Production The Australian Film Finance Corporation invested $3.7 million in the film. Wenders, who had a long standing fascination with the Australian outback, decided to shoot the film in and around Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia. Topic. Reception Until the End of the World was poorly received in its first release, and was both a critical and commercial failure. In the United States, the film was released by Warner Bros. in December 1991, and was on a small number of screens with almost no advertising. The U.S. box office grossed $752,856. In January 1992, Roger Ebert gave the film two stars out of four, describing the film as lacking a narrative urgency required to sustain interest in the story and that it furthermore plays like a film that was photographed before it was written, and edited before it was completed. A documentary about the globe trekking production would have likely been more interesting than the film itself, he said. Topic. Director's cut A 295-minute director's cut began touring U.S. art house theaters in late 2015 along with remasters of most of Wenders' feature-length films. This version has an intermission at 2 hours, 15 minutes. This version debuted on home media in the U.S. on Turner Classic Movies on July 24, 2017. Topic soundtrack Music from the motion picture soundtrack Until the End of the World was released December 1991, and includes the following tracks, opening title Graham Revel, Saxon Violins Talking Heads Summer Kisses, Winter Tears Julie Cruz Move With Me Dub Nena Cherry The Adversary Crime and the City Solution What's Good Lou Reed Last Night Sleep Can Fretless R.E.M. Days, Elvis Costello, Claire's theme, Graham Revel, I'll Love You, Till the End of the World, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, It Takes Time, Patty Smith, with Fred Smith, Death's Door, Depeche Mode, Love Theme, Graham Revel, Calling All Angels, Remix Version, Jane Seberry with K. D. Lang, Humans from Earth, T. Bone Burnett, Sleeping in the Devil's Bed, Daniel Lanois, Until the End of the World. U2 finale Graham Revel 2 additional songs were used in the film but were not included on the soundtrack Blood of Eden written and performed by Peter Gabriel a different version which features Sinead O'Connor appears on his 1992 album Us and was released as a single The version in the film is only available on the CD single for the version released on Us Breaking the Rules, written and performed by Robbie Robertson, also released on Robertson's album Storyville. The German film director Uli M. Schupel made a documentary film about the recording of I'll Love You Till the End of the World by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. The film was released 1990 as the song and re released 2004 under a new arrangement. <laughs>